JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Dieter Snow Charles, because today is the 16th of March uh, 2020. So, yeah, guys, welcome, everyone. Welcome to this Monday's morning session. But unfortunately, it's not going to be, it's not live. This is a recording. And, uh, yep, like I said, this, as I've mentioned last week, uh, this is going to be a temporary. Um, measure that we'll have to uh, undertake um, and uh, yes for now the, like I said there won't be any uh, possibility to run let's say the uh, a live session so we will do this one um, recorded um, but uh, like I said I'll try to quickly as quick as possible to re upload this one on the on the, on, on, on YouTube so for you to kind of uh, have a look at it so um, as always, guys, before we uh, jump in, let's quick ha let quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so also just before we um, jump in, um, so quick mentioning of our JVD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, um, and of course our JVD Bank website and specifically our JVD Research page, which we update on a daily basis. So yeah, feel free to visit us here on JVDBank.com and click on the Research tab right there, guys. So now then, let's quickly jump into the charts. Now the first one I want to touch on here is the FTSE 100. Now looking at this uh, chart here this is a daily chart of course uh, we we did get another strong hit um, last week and as you can see uh, it drifted heavily to the downside although on Friday it did try to recover somewhat but what I was saying on Friday was that in a way, if we do see uh, the price staying above the 5,500 mark, then yes, we could see maybe a bit of a, a larger correction here to the upside. But um, well, the the close did happen below this level, although it, it still happened above the the low of last week, which is around the 5,230 mark, uh, but still closed below the 5,500 zone. So, um, in a way, it continues to drift below this downside resistance line here, this steep downside line. Um, um, and uh, for now, don't get me wrong, um, of course, we would like to see maybe some sort of a, a correction here at some point, but it's really difficult because uh, we can see that, for example, looking at the cash index here, uh, we can see that the uh, well, the price continues to drift lower. It's currently at 5,160 zone. So, um, in a way, um, looking at this picture, it's basically already below the the low of last week. Um, and uh, if, in a way, in a few, in you know, in in an hour, uh, we'll get the open. And um, well, if it's going to stay there for now, then it, and in a way yes we will have a nice uh, opening gap here to the downside so looking at this picture here and uh, some potential levels here uh, which we could consider now um, of course the level here this low of, of June 2012 got met but given that it continues to drift lower I've talked about this level last week basically where um, the 5075 mark I've spoke about this area and uh, what I was um, what I was talking about that if we get a drop below the 5230 zone then yes further declines are possible we could start aiming for this lowest point of November 2000 2011 and which is around the 5075 mark so for now that's our target um, again don't get me wrong we we do have some lower levels here like for example the uh, this one could be around uh, around the five four thousand eight hundred and sixty eight zone that's the uh, the lowest point of October 2011 so again for now, let's keep it short and simple. Let's target the 5,075 mark. That's the uh, the lowest point of November 2011, uh, because, like I said, the price is already currently below the uh, 5,230 zone, which was the low of last week. And so, yep, it increases the chances of a further uh, test uh, of a further move lower 
potentially towards that uh, 5,000 and uh, uh, 5,075 level here. So keep your eyes on that one. In terms of the upside, again, it's very difficult to talk about the upside, um, and uh, for now, it's we're not even considering that. Um, the German DAX now. Uh, looking at this picture here, so um, the index drifted lower, tested the area around the 9064, 65 zone here, and uh, this was the low of last week. But um, um, if you can see here uh, on the cash index, uh, we can see that the price is on German DAX is already trading at currently around the 8,740 zone. So basically, um, looking at this picture here, we are at eight, we are well below the uh, the last week's low. And uh, well, I mean, looking at this picture, I mean, it's not really looking good here. And uh, we're even below this low, the the lowest point of 2006. Is that correct? Is this the lowest point? Yes, that is correct. So we're even below the uh, the lowest point of 2016, which is roughly around. And let me just quickly try to capture that low. It's very touchy. There we go. So and that's roughly around the 8,700 zone. So we're below that. Uh, we're like I said, we're currently uh, trading at around 8,000. Uh, seven. Oh, actually, I do apologize. We are just fractionally above that. So 8,730 zone. So um, we are just basically slightly above that. Let's can let's see how this area if it holds or not. This 8,700 zone. If it doesn't, well, I mean. Look at this. I mean, this this is where it could continue drifting further, uh, further south towards the lowest point of is this the lowest point of October uh, 2014? Yes, that is the lowest point of 2014, guys, and that's roughly around the 8,355 zone. So, well, keep your eyes on this one, guys. For now, yes, we are closer to the lowest point of 2014. Uh, oh, sorry, 2016. And there we go. Um, near the 8,700 zone, but if that fails, then yep, it could open the path towards the lowest point of 2014. So, well, keep your eyes on that one, again, in, guys. In terms of the upside, we would like to see a push, of course, back above the this area here the lowest point of 2018 and that's roughly around the 10,280 zone if we get a nice push above this then yes we will aim for higher levels for now uh for now yes uh, we are um closer to the low of 2016 guys let's see if this 8,700 level can hold um looking at gold um, so gold drifted below this upside support line. So this upside support line is taken from the low of 22nd of May. So roughly around there or 21st of May, even better. Um, and uh, I've talked about this one. And what I was saying that if we see a break of this, then yep, further declines are possible. But if, if of course, if the price stays above this upside line, then well, we could see some upside. But again, uh, as you can see, it's now at a very tricky spot. It, uh, last week it closed below this, but now it kind of qu quickly jumped jumped back up here um, and uh, it was selling off sharply on Friday as well because the markets on Friday were recovering um, but today you see we are seeing another drop here as the markets continue to slide so um, and uh, or the other way around sorry the, it, it has rebounded gold rebounded a little bit and uh, as the markets continue to slide so now the big question here is can this stay above this upside support line if it can uh, and if we see a, a push back above the 1575 zone roughly around here then yes we will aim for uh, for some higher levels again but if it stays below this and if it travels once again if it travels below the 1536 zone somewhere around here then yes we will aim for the downside we'll aim for that low of last week uh, which is roughly around the 1505 mark um, not far from there you can see that we have the 200 uh, day EMA here and uh, in a way if if this all this fails to withhold well I mean this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and further declines could be possible so yep guys for now uh, keep your eyes on this one we do have a good potential area of support here um, in case this uh, drifts deeply uh, to the downside here but um, let's see how the markets are going to perform uh, because um, 
uh, because, well, I mean, uh, if the, the markets continue to slide, maybe there could be some interest in gold again. But uh, of course, like I said, be, be very careful. And from the technical side, keep your eyes on those levels that I've mentioned for the upside. Keep your eyes on the 1575 zone. So uh, DXY. So as you probably are aware, um, the um, if you probably are aware that the Fed today, this 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 morning slashed um, its uh, their interest rate, um, so it now it's now in the range of between zero and zero point twenty five percent. So basically, um, yep, everybody, all the central banks are trying to take measures um, apart from the ECB, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, last week. Um, so basically, the new the, the the new the the New Zealand uh, Reserve Bank or Reserve Bank of New Zealand um, also slashed its interest rates by zero uh, by seventy five basis points uh, when, while the Fed did a uh, hundred basis points cut so basically uh, we saw here uh, we, we saw last week the, the, the DXY the dollar index accelerating higher what I was talking about was that if we get a push above the uh, 98.20 uh, zone, then yes, we could aim for higher levels. The only thing is to what to watch out for is this um, upside support line, which could kind of pro provide uh, some resistance. And as you can see, uh, it, all, not only it, but also this 98.70 zone also provided very good resistance from which the uh, the the index here drifted to the downside and kind of remains for now for the day remains in the negative territory so um, it, it drifted lower but it got held by the 200 day EMA here as you can see so uh, for us to let's say aim for lower levels on this one we would like to see um, now we would like to see a drop uh, a good drop below the 200 e uh, 200 day EMA here uh, below this 97.70 zone and just for that extra confirmation a drop below the 97.35 zone could maybe do the trick here for more uh, so so something to consider, something to keep an eye on. Uh, for now, th these are difficult times. Um, we are, like I said, very uh, careful here because the market uh, has a lot of volatility and uh, in a way this could start drifting either way. But again, how we could play this one out technically is um, if we get a push above the 98.70-71 zone here, then yes, we will aim for the upside again. But if it um, pushes below the 97.70 zone and, and this 200-day EMA, um, yes, we'll start being very cautious. But if it drops below the 97.70, 35 then yes we will aim for lower levels again here guys so uh, for now uh, yes keep your eyes on this one let's see how this is going to play out today uh, but these are the two levels that we're keeping close eye on um, now then uh, Brent oil so um, something to keep an eye on as well because we are getting uh, we are approaching the low of last week which was around the uh, 31.30 zone so if we do get a nice good drop below that, then yes, it, this would open the path towards lower levels. Something to consider here. Let me just show you what I'm talking about now. Uh, the we, the low of uh, February 2016. Um, that's what we're going to be targeting. The lowest point of of, of February uh, 2016, and that's roughly around the uh, 29.95 zone. So basically, not far from that psychological 30 zone. But if that fails to withhold, well, I mean, this could lead towards the lowest point of 2016, and that's around the 27. Point uh, 13 level so again uh, for now we're, what we're going to do here is just we're going to continue monitoring the low of, of last week which is around the 31.30 a break of that would confirm a forthcoming lower low and could open the path towards these two levels here the lowest point of February 2016 around the uh, 29.95 zone and towards the lowest point of uh, 2016 in general uh, near the 27.13 zone so keep your eyes on those um, in case of if this decides to re reverse back to the upside the way we're going to look at this one we will wait for a push above the uh, high of the uh, 11th of March uh, which is around the 39.60 zone and only then aim for a, a bit of a, a larger correction because don't forget that we're still below this downside resistance line taken from the high of the the 8th of January or in other words the highest point of January so 
Um, again, guys, if we do get a push above the back above the 39.60, then uh, we will aim for a bit of upside, uh, but only up until this downside line. Uh, jumping into a few pairs now. So USDJPY, I talked about this one uh, last week, and basically what I was talking about that in a way it could after it managed to break this uh, downside line, it it kind of opened the path for itself towards higher levels. This morning we are seeing a bit of a a correction here. Uh, um, so which is coming in line perfectly so I've talked about this correction as well uh, yes last week um, so now all eyes are on this downside line which in a way could continue acting as a good area of support so um, we could be testing this one again maybe from uh, from above here but if it's if it, if the rate remains above this downside line we could see something like this where we could see another round of buying um, for those who are more on the cautious side what you could do here is just probably wait this one out until we get a, a rise up until the 108.58 zone and a break of it a break of it would confirm a forthcoming uh higher high and uh, yep we could start aiming for higher levels now this idea here of a potential um, a potential kind of rebound in here and a push back to the upside is kind of also supported by this upside support line so uh, which is taken from the low of the 9th of March so something to consider guys something to keep an eye on so in a way um, if we remain above these two lines then yes there could be more chances for this one to drift higher but if it um, struggles to remain above this and it starts breaking both of these then well uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start looking at this 104.48 zone a drop below that would confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, well I mean further declines could be uh, a forthcoming lower low on the shorter time frame here and yes uh, further declines could be possible uh, USDCH chef so um, also a bit of a decline here um, I talked about the 0 0.9555 level on Friday and uh, we we did try to overcome this but as you can see the rate still remained below it and now is drifting to a little bit to the downside so all eyes are on this upside line and um, if it holds a nice rebound could be possible um, if it fails then a drop below the 0 0.9419 level also here could do the trick for more sellers and uh, we could start aiming for these levels let me just quickly put the, that one on the chart that's the low here of um, the zero uh, the low of, of uh, the 12th of March and that's around the 0 0.9317 zone so that's that's gonna be our little target here uh, we're not gonna drag this one too much to the downside uh, for now we'll be very careful and cautious but again like I said we will consider the downside only if we see a drop below the 0 0.9419 level um, for those who are more on the cautious side uh, you could wait for a push above the 0 0.9555 zone or even let's say better um, a push above the high of last week near the 0 0.9569 70 zone roughly around there this a break above this would confirm a forthcoming higher high the only problem here is with the upside is the the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart and also this downside resistance line taken from the highest point of November 2019 so uh, in a way any move higher here could still be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of selling so that's why don't the bulls should not get their hopes up too much um, and uh, well we, we probably is better to go step by step on this one so if we do get a push above the uh, the 0 0.9569 zone then yes we will aim for higher levels of course for now we are keeping an eye on this upside line because if it holds we could see a nice rebound and a push higher but just like I said for those who are more on the cautious side a push above the 0 0.9570 zone 6970 zone here could do the trick um, GBP USD very quickly on this um, so a rebound a little bit so after it kind of slid heavily to the downside then let me just jump into a daily chart on this one because um, it will be probably easier so after we managed to get our drop here uh, below this level I talked about this level last week this is uh, the 1.2514 and as you can see on Friday uh, we sh fell sharply below that and uh, drifted all the way here towards uh, the low of uh, um, yes last week's low was around the 1.2263 zone but uh, this morning already you can see that the pair managed to create a new low at near the 1.2255 area so um, this is the level that we're going to be keeping a close eye on because if it um, if it 
drops below this then yes this would confirm a forthcoming lower low all eyes are on the lowest point of october 2019 that's roughly around the 1.2195 um, but if that fails to withhold then we do have some good levels of support here especially around the lowest point of september 2019 that's uh, below the psychological 120 mark and around the 1.1959 zone so something to consider something to keep an eye on for now we are more bearish than bullish uh, for now we are considering uh, a scenario of something like this basically where maybe we could see a bit of a, a, a larger correction here to the upside but if the pair struggles to push back above the uh, 1.2514 or even uh, let me just recycle one of these lines or even if it struggles to push above this inside swing high, the high of the 3rd of October 2019, which is around the uh, 1.2413 zone, as you can see, this is where this morning already uh, roughly around where the, uh, the pair got held. If it continues to struggle to move above this, yes we could see something like this again uh, drop lower and uh, well all the, the level these levels that are talked about could come into play nicely but again for now uh, we'll, we're very careful and cautious in terms of the upside yes keep your eyes on this 1.2514 a push above this yes would confirm a for uh, or it wouldn't be a forthcoming higher high but uh, maybe we could then travel for a little bit of a large a bit of a larger correction here towards the 1.2724 which is the low of the 28th of February or in other words the lowest point of February um, good potential area of, of support previously was seen um, now it could be seen as a nice good area of resistance so keep your eyes on this one and finally euro USD so um, last week I talked about this one let me just jump into a four-hour chart um, so last week I talked about this upside support line and this is what I was telling you guys to keep an eye on and uh, yes we did drift lower we did initially test that on Friday we saw and what I was saying as well that we could see another drop lower another test of this upside support line taken from the low of the 20th of February and uh, if it holds then yep another rebound could be possible um, as you can see, um, the pair is rebounding. It's trying to make its way higher. The only thing, the only problem here with the upside for now is this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 9th of March. So keep your eyes on that one because um, in a way what we could do here is just to play it safe. Uh, we could just probably wait for a push above this barrier here. We would need to see, a, first we would need to see a break of this downside line and then a push above the 1.1238 area here. And uh, that's basically the 1.1238. It was the highest point of December 2019. Um, and uh, a nice good pop above this could open the path towards higher levels here guys so again for now for now be very careful cautious and uh, in terms of the downside we need to see a drop um, below the upside this upside support line and uh, uh, of course now we would like to see a drop below uh, the uh, last week's low um, which is roughly around the 1.2 10.54 zone, so approximately around there. So um, a drop below this territory here could do the trick here for more uh, for more sellers, and uh, well, further declines could be possible. For now, we're probably going to be a little bit more cautiously bullish, I would say. But um, in order to get comfortable with the upside, we need some uh, confirmation breaks here uh, above the 1.1238. But in, if this suddenly reverses sharply to the downside, breaks this upside line and falls below the 1.1054 zone, then, well, I mean, this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and further declines could be possible. Okay, guys, I really hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for sticking around. Well, actually, <laughs> sticking around. Thank you very much for watching this uh, recorded uh, video. Um, um, please um, have a look at the um, the. Um, I'll try to upload the next video, the Traders Tea Time, as always around uh, 14, 15 GMT time. Um, if not, it may, might be a few maybe minutes later. But yep, keep your keep your eyes on that one. Keep your eyes on our uh, channel. And uh, yep, like I said, I will uh, watch out for my video later on. Uh, I'll where I will cover some of these instruments and some new ones as well. So yep. Uh, wonderful. Have a wonderful day, guys. Be stay safe, stay uh, healthy, and uh, uh, like I said, I'll see you later. Thank you very much, and bye bye.